A number of people at the conference this year have come up and said, you know, why, why do you keep talking about tools like Track, you know, because no one ever uses it properly? Well, guess what? I'm talking about it because you, you keep not using it properly, and that's the whole point. You know, I keep going into these environments where they've got some tools, be it Track or something else, and half the trick isn't the tool, it's just how you use it. And there's some big surprises sometimes come out when you start using it properly. So when I started thinking about the title for the talk, I thought, hmm, why do I use track? Well, it's possibly because I don't like using post-it notes that drive me up the wall. And it's nice to have documentation that doesn't suck, that's actually maintained and up-to-date. And I really like keeping managers off my back. Or better yet, as at the moment I'm managing a team, I like not bugging them because I know what they're doing. And particularly, I like track because I like hassle-free holidays either my own or for my team. You know, once tasks are captured, work's captured, things are well documented, people can go on leave and not have their phone ring. This is all good. So we're going to just give you a really quick run through of track. If any of you at my talk last year in the lightning talks, you may have seen a few of the slides. Uh, cover off some of the key concepts, why you need this sort of tool, even in a sysadmin and ops environment. Some quick tips and tricks. and Hopefully, a, um, a quick overview of some sample environments to kind of show off what you need to be thinking about and some of the reasons why it's not often being used effectively. So what is it? Project Process Management Framework, at least that's what it says on the website, open source, and it's used by a lot of open source projects, a number of which have been spoken about uh, here this week. Pigeon uses it and puts a nice little skin over it, though. Um, VirtualBox's website is served by Track. They've done a really good job of reskinning it. It looks quite cool. But when we're in the area of sysadmin and ops management, what are our needs from a, some sort of management tool? Let's think, move beyond post-it notes. We need to prioritize work and assign it appropriately and know when it's completed. Um, document our process and procedure in a way that um, when the next team member starts you, or you move on to another role, people can pick up the work very quickly. Management visibility is, can be a good thing, honest, if it keeps them off your back. And I want some reporting. And I do like version control. It really can save your ass when you're trying to work out why a web server suddenly went off air. So there's a number of solutions out there, be they commercial or open source. Uh, a lot of places are just using something like Bugzilla just for tracking, they're not actually uh, using, a, they might use Bugzilla and a wiki and a few other tools. Uh, tools like Track and Redmine provide a more integrated approach, they try and cover all the bases. Uh, and a number of environments, including where I am at the moment, use a combination of Jira and Confluence, which is a more commercially focused approach. But I tend to like Track, because it's integrated, it covers all my bases. It has all those key features. It's got the ticketing, not just for bugs, but for tracking work. Documentation engine's very, very simple and easy to use. Version control, yeah, it's a version. If there's any Git fans in the house, yes, you can use Git, but it's a version. But the nice bit is all the sections reference each other in a very easy to use way that's very soon habit forming. And the best bit is, to think about this, that not only might you be wanting to use track for your own team or your own department, but other groups within your business might want track, or they may be using it already and you may need to manage it. It's very easy to set up. It's very simple to look after. Low overhead. Great. So say, a lot more than a bug tracker. RMA in hardware, and someone goes on holiday and you don't know where they've left it or you don't know the engineers, the engineers coming, or you don't have the support number for the company you're dealing with. It's in track, great. I've actually had this happen. It really did save some time. We were looking at being fined by an equipment supplier because we couldn't return equipment on time under the RMA. Not good. Uh, no, in this case, uh, we had to RMA some hardware, so we created a ticket for the RMA. We put in the details, the serial number, who the supplier was, when we got notified when the engineer was coming, we put that in. Turns out the guy who was dealing with this in the team went on holiday. Someone else could pick it up. You know, when the engineer rang, it goes around the team. He actually put in to track search 
the RMA number. And it pulled up the ticket and he went, oh yeah, that's on shelf B in rack five. And everything happened. No post-it notes, no emails that get forgotten about, it's just there. And when he returned the hardware, he closed off the ticket, and when the guy came back from his holiday, he knew the work had been done. Track has one little niggle in it. At, at the moment, its focus is very much single project, or so single department, or single area. Uh, within my own company, we kind of use it to manage the whole company. The company is our project. In other areas, you might have a track environment for the ops team, one for a development team, one for um, the uh, HR and general business department to monitor tasks and work. And you can do all that off a single install. So some people don't like the user interface. It's, it is skinnable. It's relatively clean. The timeline is simply a way for you to see what's been happening most recently within the, your local track environment. And the roadmap's a way to capture large-scale deliverables or bodies of work. So you might have a big project coming up and you can create a roadmap entry and then assign all the tickets, create this web server, build a new, new virtual server instance, wherever, and you track them all against that roadmap entry. Tickets, yeah, read about it on the website. Lots of things you can do with them. We'll go and create a simple ticket for a new web server instance. I don't know how well you can read that, but the, t the slides will be available. In this case, we're actually using some of Track's own syntax so that we can start referencing the documentation. So things like uh, Project Purple is using uh, Camel Case, so it will automatically reference any documentation for Project Purple. And here I'm going one for, uh, step deeper in the wiki hierarchy, so I've had to quote it but I can now reference the requirements. So if the requirements are on file in the wiki, I've automatically got reference to them from the, docu from the ticket. So we create the ticket, and the linked items are now highlighted, and they're automatically linked into your reference documentation in the same system. You can also use some of Track's features to reference external documentation quickly as well. Version control. As mentioned, uses subversion. It's not in, built into track. It simply uses subversion installed on the same server. The web browser and diff tool are really good. Text files rock with subversion, and it's a great way to diff configuration files quickly. Installation, this, um, track's own guides are pretty good. Um, click. I wrote a guide for the Open Source Developers Conference in Sydney last year that will hopefully be available in a week or two on Open Media site. It doesn't take a long time. Um, the general requirements for it package-wise are pretty minimal. Admin, pretty simple. You can do it all on the command line if you really want to. Uh, first things you want to do is actually create your environment and set up your initial user access. Come on. Work. Uh, user management is a very big deal. Think about how you want to manage the members of your team because that really assists with the triage process for any tickets. That way tickets start to get assigned to the right members of your group. Thankfully with the current version of Track, they introduced a user interface for managing uh, users and a lot of the uh, admin settings. But again, you can do all this through the Track admin command as well. Ding, ding, ding. So how can we best use it? This or any of the other, this batteries are dying in my remote control, or any of the other tools that are available. Hopefully a few of the tips and tricks here are applicable if you're using Redmine or Jira or any of those other sorts of tools. So the first thing is, uh, I've heard this term a few times, it's known as eat your own dog food. If you're going to use it, use it to manage itself. First thing you want to do is use track to set up track. And that way you effectively got the documentation of how it's configured. Create a ticket for setting up your subversion environment. Create a ticket saying you need to set up the following users. And then capture that information. And then you can use that information to start creating the documentation around your environment. Take a look at ticket types and components. Uh, type, the default types are very development focused. You know, It's a defect enhancement or a task. And the default components 
are, um, are just there as samples. The components allow the auto assignment of work to particular team members. So in your environment, you may want to have types of project, change request, service order, or new user request. Depends on how you work in your business. For the components, then you need to look at, again, how's this work going to be assigned? Who deals with authentication? Who deals with system monitoring? In a general term, you know, it doesn't have to be Nagios or something else. Just call it system monitoring. Have it assigned to the appropriate person. And definitely put in an entry for track, because someone needs to look after the environment, even lightly. Someone should own it. The syntax side of it isn't hard to pick up. You basically have a link syntax and some simple macros. So you want to reference another ticket, hash ticket. You want to let reference a subversion change request that you've made. It's our uh, change set. And all of a sudden, you've got a link to it in your ticket or in your documentation. So tickets can reference other tickets. Go back and look at ticket 57 to see how to do it properly or to see how to not do it. And you can link into your subversion tree. Uh, we often use subversion in some uh, environments I've worked in to actually store all our Word docs because if someone was updating them, we could actually track that work. The macros extend the core track engine. They allow you to do image embedding and layout, and there's a few other little extensions. One of the first things you should do if you actually want to use this for real you're probably all going, why does he keep coming back to Subversion? We're not developers. I'll come back to that. But first thing you want to do is put the Subversion post commit hook in. Because it means when you do a commit through version control, it auto-updates the tickets. So here we're going to commit our new Apache configuration into Subversion. And it will automatically update tickets 57 and 91 with the details of the commit and a link to the change set. So you've now got all visibility around those changes. You've got full visibility. It's nice and tidy. And don't commit without a ticket. What are you doing that means you need to make a subversion commit that's so damn unimportant that the work doesn't need to be captured in some way? And once you've got the commit hook and it's automatically updating your tickets, it becomes very rapidly habit forming. And version more than code, like I said, we, uh, in, a, in a couple of places, used to keep all of our Word docs, some spreadsheets, all kinds of things in Subversion. Yes, it doesn't like binary formats, but you can have a group of people work on a document, check it out, work on it, put it back in, pass it over to someone else for review. The ticket then contains the details of the review part of the process. And in some smaller businesses, they don't have a content management system. They don't have a document management system. Just put some more storage on the Subversion server. It's better than nothing. And you're going, but I don't write code. I'm not a developer. Well, you might be dealing with some, so you need to help them. But sysadmins code, we all write scripts. And we manage a lot of data, be it on systems directly or via a configuration subsystem like CF Engine Puppet. Keep all that data in Subversion, and you manage the process of looking after it via track. And if you're in a slightly larger business, you may be needing to manage track for your development team or other parts of your business. So here's kind of a breakout of some possible teams and some possible ticket types and scenarios that you might hit. So we start with operational sysadmin space, because that notionally is where we are. So as we say, roadmaps are there for the large-scale deliverables, those projects capturing those large bodies of work. We want our documentation to stay alive. We don't want that the person who takes over your job next or the new team member spends three months updating the docs yet again. Make it simple to keep the docs up to date. Um, version control, we do need it. It can make a huge difference suddenly realizing that one of your domains went off a, a month or two ago and there's been numerous changes since then, you can now go back and see why. Your user management, um, 
Think carefully, are you storing any sensitive information in track? Um, be it uh, accounts for equipment suppliers, your logins for Cisco or Dell or someone, or do you actually have root passwords stored in there on encrypted or some other strange things I've seen? Um, think about who has access to what. You've got to be very careful. And then try and break out the ticket types dependent on the classes of work you're being, you, you, you would deal with in your company or department. And when it comes down to the components, you break it out, as I said, into the way you work and how it needs to be assigned. So you may have things around your core infrastructure. Someone manages your firewall, core network, voice. Uh, w within the middleware space, do you break it out in middleware classes or do you need to be a bit more fine-grained? And also you've got your day-to-day -day ops tasks. Possibly not password resets. In some cases, you would have gazillions of tickets a year. But you know, a lot of the core things, a new member of staff starts, and you need to set them up. And that way, the ticket can easily reference the documentation for how to set up a new user. And if it's wrong, hopefully the person working on the ticket can update the doc. And then if you're looking after this for uh, your development team in-house, if you understand it better, you can help them use the tool better. So think about how they work, work with their leads to help them use the tool a little bit better. Often in the development space, they're having to reference a lot more off-site information. There's a couple of macros that make that a lot easier, into track and into wiki. Uh, for my own company stuff, I often have to reference materials on some of the video driver project uh, websites or wikis and in particular the Myth TV track environment. So I just do um, square bracket Myth TV colon ticket number square bracket and I've got a reference to their ticket on their track system. I can reference a lot of their materials very quickly in my own documentation. And again developers should be using version control. Please teach them to use version control. Um, User management, again, what sort of fine-grained control um, do you really need? Um, how much access do non-development team me members need to their docs? Ticket types are pretty similar to we what we would need in an op space, but the, the components in terms of they break their work out might be somewhat different. Uh, here, I've just used a, a web-focused development team as an example and just try to break a few things out. But hang on, you know, we've got this tool there, we can actually use it for a little bit more. Uh, how many cases has the company's PA, secretary, office admin gone on leave and things not been picked up? Uh, how many officers have a really poor wiki for managing how to fill in your timesheet, what is the process for doing an expense claim and all that other information? Also, there's a lot of regular tasks over the year businesses repeat and go back to. They could use Track to manage those. Uh, in, in case of where I'm working at the moment, a lot of those things might be managed through our JIRA and Confluence environment using a very similar process as you could do with Track. Big problem there, though, if you're starting to use it for HR and some other stuff, there may be quite a bit of, of sensitive data. So there's a good chance that there's a large chunk of say the HR department's environment, you don't want everybody else to see. Um, much as I love to know what everybody else is earning, I not, don't necessarily want everyone else to know what I'm earning. What, which tool suits you best kind of depends on the scale at, what you're, at, at which you're working. SMB to SME track may suit you, be it with a single install or multiple environments hosted off the same project. But if you get a bit bigger, you may need to look at an alternative. Redmine has become incredibly popular, uh, particularly with projects focused on Ruby, because that's what it's based on, um, but also because it allows a cleaner way to host multiple projects off a single install, and it has a slightly better authorization engine. Um, or you can start looking at the commercial alternatives, the likes of Jira, Confluence, which kind of come together. But even within some large companies, I spent a long time working with 
IBM and internally within IBM, it's surprising the number of departments that use track internally rather than use the, the big IBM corporate products. There's still a couple of little niggles. They've tidied a few things up, and, and with any of these open source projects, it's ongoing development. Uh, administration has improved considerably in 0.11, uh, which is the current stable, unless it changed overnight. Um, permissions model does still need a bit of work, personally. I'd love to have a track environment where I have publicly visible and private sections. You can't do that at the moment. So if you want your bug tracker to be visible to the general public, they will see all of your bugs and all of your docs. You can't do team-based assignments of tickets, which is very frustrating. Um, but it actually has quite a good little reporting tool. So uh, dependent on how large your organization is, it's not too difficult. Oops to see if tickets aren't being picked up. The workflow model, it's may, it can grate a little uh, if you have some corporate process, like uh, certain types of ticket may require a sign off. At the moment, you basically have to have it documented that if the ticket is this class, assign it to so-and-so to sign it off. What would be really nice is if there were a certain classes of tickets that the workflow meant that somebody had to sign them off or they had to go through an approval process. Uh, none of that's there at the moment. The workflow system is customizable, but it's kind of one workflow for every type of ticket at the moment. And most of the inconsistencies have been resolved. Uh, at one point, only certain types of content could be diffed between revision. So it's quite difficult to see uh, the differences between revisions of your wiki documentation, even though those diffs were captured under the hood. I mean, track at the end of the day, a default install needs uh, a bit of Python and SQLite. It doesn't have a lot of requirements. And all the metadata is stored in the SQLite database. And it keeps most of the changes over time. But some of those weren't exposed. And now it's quite easy to see that someone did such a revision on the wiki and this is the previous revision and go back over time and do comparisons. If you want to have a play with track, go to Edgewall's site. Uh, there are some sample track environments around on the web you can go in and just have a play with. Um, I believe there's a couple of um, VMware virtual appliances and things around now that can get you up and running really quickly, but it doesn't take a lot to install it. If you're using one of the mainstream distros and you want to get it up and running, check what version you've got. Um, a lot of them are a few versions off and it's not difficult to actually install the most current directly from track site. They support Python's easy install process. Sadly, that means that the install's outside of your package management process, but it's, it's not that difficult. If you have a bunch of developers that really want to use this, take a look at Mylin. It's a it's a plugin for Eclipse that means that they can work extremely effectively with Track and Redmine and several other tools. Track Hacks has a load of add-ons. Don't get too carried away, because all of a sudden you may troll your track environment. And if you start relying on Track, create a sandbox somewhere. I, I, I love virtualization. I have a little virtual sandbox. I go and test all my plugins and add-ons in and decide whether or not they're actually worth using in production. And if you want this presentation and the details on the install process for Ubuntu and Red Hat Enterprise, they'll be on Open Media's site in a day or two. Any questions? I just wanted to uh, double the plug for uh, Track Hacks. The, the plugins that are available for Track 11 are really awesome. But I also wanted to say, um, you're talking about the workflow customization. And there's actually um, a plugin called Advanced Workflow that allows you to branch your workflow on the basis of the ticket type. And so you actually can have different workflow types based on the ticket type. So check out Advanced Workflow. And that's one reason why it's worth doing these talks, because I can learn something new too. Yay. So I'll go this way this time. 
can you recommend a snapshotting tool? Because we had this one project that was using track very nicely, and then we had to go to the client site where we didn't have access, and all of a sudden we had no documentation, which sucked. Um, there's a couple of things you can do. A, tracks and subversion both have very simple backup mechanisms. You can uh, do a real quick backup that's effectively a living copy. And so actually when I go on the road, I bring my company's track environment with me wherever it was. You can't merge it back in, but at least you have it with you. Um, track does have a process for doing PDF exports from the documentation, but there's a track hacks add-on that lets you link a bunch of documentation together. So you may have been working on a project and to keep things neat and tidy, split the docs over a series of pages. Using the plugin, you can link them together and print them as a virtual book. And that's brilliant. You briefly mentioned reporting. What sort of reporting is available? Right. Um, let's see if we can... Where can I go? Um, Got to love OpenVPN. Okay, so here's a little track sample environment providing, yep, there's the link, it's all up. And you have your view tickets area over there, which has the stock reports. So active tickets, look at them by version, uh, which is one of the ticket fields you can use, milestone, owner, and so on. My tickets. So this is, this is one of the most simple reports, and it just shows all active tickets. So, and then that clicks through. Now you can actually, behind the scenes at the moment, this actually uses some quite simple SQLite queries to build the reports. And once you've looked at one of the sample tickets, sample reports, it's quite easy to start cooking some up. Um, they're going to be building in a reporting language into a future release of track that's a lot more flexible. But I did things like um, capture certain ticket classes that I want visibility of, uh, or the manager want to see all tickets closed in the last 24 hours and those sorts of things. And they're quite easy to add in then. It's not uh, uber pretty, but it's sufficient. Uh, we've got about uh, 10,000 users, and uh, how about things like backing up uh, your authentication to LDAP and uh, managing like a general user class plus people who do, um, you know, jobs, yeah. so resolve those? Um, we had an environment where the user authentication was all done off LDAP because we basically front end off Apache or like HTTPD, get it to do the initial auth. There are some stuff to extend it with LDAP to do the authorization side of things, what the permissions are and so on. I haven't gone that deep and I don't know how well it'll scale. At the model you're looking at, you might want to have a play with Redmine though as well. But some of it is possible. We were actually doing uh, internal IBM LDAP authentication using internal groups, so only our group had access to our system, and that worked really well. Yeah. Yeah. So we're using an LDAP group, but we're doing that at the Apache level rather than within track. Um, point one one has been around for a while. What they're planning for point one two? Do you know? Um, well, actually, it's it's dot eleven as in the fun numbering we have in the open source space, and it's on point eleven point something now, one or two. Um, Twelve again is um, some of the reporting stuffs going in. Uh, some more work on the UI because they've been changing some of the the libraries they use for some of the UI to make it a bit more flexible some more stuff in the workflow. 
Um, not sure about the rest at the moment. It's been a while since I looked at where they are, they are in the roadmap. At the moment, uh, 11 is a really big step ahead of 10, and it's, it pretty much rocks for most use. Can you talk some more about the Myelin integration, what it does, what it doesn't do, that sort of thing? Long times has been a real developer. Uh, so most of my experiences with real hardcore Java or web developers using it, uh, basically it'll log into track on your behalf or Redmine or Jira, and it will sync the tickets assigned to you. And then as you do your commits, it will send messages back about what you've been working on for your tickets, and you can effectively close and manage your tickets. We can actually work remotely as well. So you go into the office, you sync against the track environment, and then you go away, you can work remotely. When you're back in the office, I think you can sync your progress back into track. Oh, asking about branching and version control. That's really the real subversion level. Uh, so at the end of the day, you can use any tool you like against subversion. Uh, what Track does provide is a subversion browser. And this environment has no source, I think. Yeah, it has no source. But you just brow you can browse your subversion tree and do diffs against it um, through here. And that's, I actually consider it reasonably management friendly. Uh, occasionally I've had to point uh, managers into this area and say, you know, that they want to know why something happened and go, well, look at this diff. And they go, What's a diff? Okay, just, just go to the link. It's okay. It'll make sense. And it's a nice, clean display. All right. We're just about out of time. One more? Anyone? No? Okay. All right. Well, thank you all very much.